Hi, I'm Gary Lambert, Hexagon U.S. Federal. Today, Lieutenant General Retired Mike Maples is with us to discuss current global trends in our national security environment and the technologies that support those causes. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Ed, delighted to be here, Gary. Thanks Great. so much. Thank it's you. wonderful to be back here at Hexagon Live. Yes, it's a Already wonderful a event, isn't it? Show. It sure is. Well, let's jump into the first today's topic. Okay. And your background is in national security is very extensive. And in your opinion, what are some of the current global trends that will affect our national security environment? You know, thank you, because I think that's a, it's a critical question uh, and one that I've already seen raised here at the show in the talks that I've attended so far. Uh, and if I had to summarize it, I say we're in a period of increased tensions. Okay? Right. We're going to have more conflict uh, globally than we've had in the past. And I think the reasons for that uh, are numerous. Um, first of all, there are a number of global trends. Uh, there's a competition for resources, a shortage of water, a shortage of food. Uh, we have issues with migration as populations move uh, between countries and areas. Uh, we're seeing greater urbanization, uh, the growing of our cities. Uh, and with that, greater unemployment, particularly only, uh, young, uh, among young males. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then we have this competition of ideologies uh, right. that is uh, striking us as well. But I think most critical that we are seeing evidence of right now is a changing to the international order, which has guided the efforts of nations and people since the end of World War II. And all of the protocols, the institutions, the alliances that have guided stability and progress since that period of time are now starting to break down, uh, either uh, breaking down completely or starting to be ignored by, by many uh, who are not signatories to those. Right. So we have this great uh, uh, changing of the international order uh, with no real picture of what the outcome is going to be. Okay. So, so many of the norms that we are used to mm -hmm. aren't existent, uh, existent anymore. Okay. The end result of that is that we're going to have greater global disorder and the distribution of power in the international system is going to change. Well, it sounds like there's quite a few moving parts to these global situations. How does, does this change the nature of conflict? Uh, I think the nature of conflict is going to change uh, dramatically. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, uh, the risk of conflict is going to increase uh, substantially. Uh, and because we have divergent in interests among the major powers uh, mm -hmm. of the world, uh, we have terrorist threats that come from state and non-state actors, uh, individuals who act alone and those who act on behalf of uh, their ideologies. We have greater instability in the weaker states uh, as well. And then we have the spread of lethal and disruptive technologies with greater access to those technologies and a reduction in our ability to attribute mm -hmm. uh, the use of those technologies. Uh, all of this leads us to a very different state in terms of conflict. I think that war and peace uh, can't really be separated as states. Uh, we're going to be in a constant state right. of conflict. It may not be all-out war as we have known it in the past, but conflict is going to be there. And we're going to move back and forth between peace and conflict on a regular basis, and we should uh, expect that. The spectrum of conflict is, uh, is going to be total. We're going to go and need to be prepared for the mm -hmm. possibility of all-out war, Mm -hmm. um, and all the way down to the actions of a sing single lone wolf individual. Uh, and we have to be able to re react to that entire spectrum uh, and have the capabilities to uh, emerge successful. I think that future conflicts are going to be uh, uh, more diverse. Mm -hmm. They're going to be more distributed uh, globally. Uh, and I think they're going to be more disruptive. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think single acts that we've seen recently uh, are an example of that. Okay. In many cases, warfare is going to be characterized by standoff. And by that I mean if we can uh, act remotely uh, and engage other nations or powers, mm -hmm. uh, then we will choose to do that. 
uh, rather than the direct confrontation between uh, militaries. Right. However, warfare is uniquely a human function. We will never turn it over entirely to machines. Humans are always sure. going to be a part of that. And, and as a result, we're going to see uh, greater targeting of non-military targets. Certainly military targets are going to be a part of it, but as we heard described this morning uh, in the attacks on 9-11, sure. where two airplanes attacked towers uh, and symbols of uh, American success, and we're going to find governments, infrastructure, civilian and corporate structures, mm -hmm. uh, and even information sources that are going to be under attack. Okay. So following that, that's uh, very interesting in that the, the nature of the conflict and how that's going to arise. But so what are the consequences that will arise because of this in the war fighting environment? I, I uh, very much enjoyed Ula Rowland's presentation yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things, he, he was talking about Lord Nelson. Uh, yes. And essentially he came down to expect the unexpected. Okay. okay. And I think that, that, that really is what it means in the, in the war fighting environment, is that we've got to be prepared uh, for the unexpected. And that means we're in this condition of change. We have to have certain base knowledge uh, that we operate from, mm -hmm. but we must be continually learning. Uh, we must be continually adapting. And we have to turn our systems to predictive kinds of intelligence and predictive actions that will enable us to stay ahead of the acts. We, we, we can't be catching up, mm -hmm. okay? We've got to be in front of them and stop them or alter them. Uh, and, and that's a very, very difficult thing uh, to it certainly do. certainly is. Um, so we've got, to, we've got to detect intent. We've got right. to detect activity that shows that that in, intent is being carried out. Right. Uh, we have to, uh, in the urban environment that I mentioned, have lots of technologies that we've got to uh, develop that will enable us to operate in that environment, whether it's detecting uh, heat sources seen through uh, walls, uh, discriminatory targeting so that we don't uh, in endanger civilian populations, uh, uh, friend versus foe knowledge that we have out there. We've got to have the situational awareness mm -hmm. uh, that will enable us to be successful. Uh, it has to be more predictive uh, and it ha has to give us greater flexibility in conducting uh, our operations. I think to that end, uh, we're going to see a lot of capabilities such as uh, cyber capabilities, long range precision munitions, uh, robotic systems that have been mentioned, UAVs, right. swarms of drones that are talking to each other and providing information back and forth that will enable us uh, to gain better uh, awareness and, and a knowledge. Uh, lots of automation mm -hmm. uh, and, and automated vehicles that are going to be out there. Uh, and I can't stress enough the importance of information, of intelligence, of networks and relationships because we're going to have less warning time. Right. And so we've got to be more prepared and we're going to have to be more responsive. So if I were to summarize all of that, uh, we've got to be able to see, we've got to be able to understand, and we've mm -hmm. got to be able to act before our, our adversaries do. Right. Very interesting. Well, in today's age, with these threats on the horizon, technology plays a crucial role to prevent, identify, and counter attacks. Can you discuss some of the enabling technologies that will in, in, enable intelligence collection and warfighting? There are a huge number that are, are critically important, I think, to, uh, to our future. Uh, as I just said, uh, we, we have to be able to see first, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that goes to our suite of sensor systems, okay? Our, our, our surveillance, reconnaissance, and sensors. And having smart sensors who understand what they're seeing uh, and uh, can learn from that, uh, that are precision in nature so that we have precision knowledge, precision targeting capabilities. We can detect change. Uh, we can recognize faces of an individual. Uh, we can understand patterns uh, that are going on. And we, from those patterns, be able to predict activity uh, that uh, is what we are looking for. So we, we've, we've got to know what, what to see, what to look for, uh, and, and then be able to find it uh, and relay that to somebody who really, uh, really needs it. Uh, Cybersecurity and protection of our information systems is essential to everything else because we are going to have inf intelligence driven operations. And so we've got to have the information, we've got to have the intelligence, and it's got to get to the people who can action it. 
properly. Uh, cloud computing, I think, is an essential uh, need for us uh, in the future, uh, and that includes large data centers, small data centers. Uh, Ula talked about how much data we have, sure. but being able to comb through all of that, make sense of all of that, right. uh, and then find what we're really looking for in all of that data is, is a very difficult thing, but we've got to get the critical pieces to the surface, okay, mm -hmm. and in the hands of those uh, who need it. Artificial intelligence, uh, absolutely important. We've got to be learning constantly uh, and seeing changes and applying that uh, with algorithms uh, that will enable us to become smarter and smarter uh, through the use of our, our technology. Uh, we have lots of full motion video uh, capabilities right now. Our problem is we don't have the human capability to sort through all of it mm -hmm. to find what we're looking for. We need to automate the systems so that the machines know what we're looking for and can detect it, can pick it out, and then bring that to the attention of those who need to know that. Um, uh, robotics, I have already talked about. Uh, modeling and simulation, I think, is a, a critical uh, technology that needs to be developed uh, further. We're going to have lots of scenarios. But, but humans uh, can't totally understand the effect of change. Mm -hmm. And we need to be in a constant process of, of introducing our assumptions, introducing changes that are going on, and see how they, they change our plans, how they change our methods of operation, uh, and, and what kinds of things we can do uh, that will give us decision advantage and operational advantage with our, with our adversaries. Um, all of those are uh, technologies that are in the works or uh, are future technologies being developed, uh, but they're essential for us to have the kinds of information and intelligence and war fighting capabilities mm -hmm. that are going to make us successful in the future. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear so many technologies we're already working on are proving to be critical to our national security. It's about time to wrap up our discussion, but we, before we, we go, any additional comments or thoughts to add, you want to add? I, uh, I was uh, very moved by the remarks uh, uh, that uh, at the beginning of Stephen Quast's presentation mm -hmm. when the deputy fire chief of New York City spoke about his experiences uh, on 9-11 uh, and how the first responders uh, acted during that period of time. And my personal knowledge uh, for what our military does uh, for this nation as well. And then I, and I see from the events of this morning in Alexandria, my hometown, uh, of the response of the Capitol Police and the Alexandria Police sure. to resolve that situation. And so, and so the whole idea of safety and security places a huge demand uh, on all of us, and particularly those who are involved in protecting uh, our nations and our freedom uh, as well. We've got to be predictive. We can't be reactive. And that means we have to be ahead. We need to see and understand and then uh, predict what's going to happen and try to change the future before the future happens, okay, to head those right. things off. And that's, that's very difficult. But we've got to see events as they're unfolding, not as they happened. Mm -hmm. We've got to see them in advance uh, so that we can uh, intercept, interfere, um, or change the course of, of history by averting those, those actions of so many. We've got to be precise. We've got to be precise in our knowledge. We've got to be precise in time and in space. Um, and we've got to be accurate all the time, okay? Not most of the time, mm -hmm. all the time. If it's most of the time, that means we're losing, right. okay? We, we've got to that. be ahead of that. And we've got to have the technologies to see, to understand, to act, and to win. Uh, when I first came to the conference uh, yesterday, I was walking around, and I enjoy reading all of these signs that are posted throughout the, uh, the right. conference halls, and I stop and, and read them because I always find little tidbits in there uh, and, and thoughts and ideas mm -hmm. that, uh, that really strike me. And there was one I, I, I copied down okay. yesterday because sure. it had to do with the subject I right. knew I was going to talk about. Right. But this is on a sign that has okay. to do with defense out there. And it says, Hexagon Solutions enable you to know instantly notice immediately, detect now, and more importantly, predict and avoid. That captures it. Yes, That's it does. what I'm talking it's about. Very appropriate, okay? yes. And that's what we need to ensure our safety, our security, and the success of our war fighters, our first responders very good. in the future. This has been very informative and interesting. This has been great. Well, it sounds like this is a critical moment in our history for innovation through technologies on the international stage. 
And it's been very interesting to see how these innovations in the future unfolds. It will be. Thanks, Gary. A big thank you, Mike, to uh, talking with us. And for more information, uh, go to hexagonusfederal.com. And for additional videos, go to hxgntv.com. Thank you very much.